Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's matchup between Young Rock and Bosses and the visiting New Bedford Whalers. Bucking High School would like to take this opportunity to encourage you to display good sportsmanship to everyone involved. Please do your part by showing respect to every spectator, athlete, coach, and official involved in today's contest. Inappropriate behavior or language will not be tolerated and may result in your removal from the stadium. This game is being played according to the rules of the MIAA. For your convenience, restrooms are located under the bleachers on the press box side of the field. Also, please support our boosters by visiting the snack shack located near the scoreboard and by the main gate of the stadium. We also ask that you not stand on the sideline fences. We need to keep that area clear, so please stand either on the end zone or up in the stands. Now we'd like to take the time to introduce the seniors from our cheerleading squad. Your shared enthusiasm is what Boston Nation is all about. Your seniors, Nicole Catania, <laughs> Jenna Ruthia, <laughs> Sheila Dome, <laughs> Ayana Padoso. Makaya Houston. <laughs> Adiza Adogo Jake. <laughs> Sky Montero. <laughs> Stacy Oliveira. And Alexis Vaz. We now ask that you please rise and direct your attention to the flag as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem by the award-winning Brockton High School marching band. Gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, this is Rocky Marciano Stadium, home of your Brockton Boxers, and tonight 
It is, yes, technically the last game of the regular season as the Boxers wrap up against their big three divisional rivals, the New Bedford Whalers. As always, I am Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined tonight by my broadcast partner, the one, the only, big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, it's simple. The Boxers win tonight. They win the big three division. They get the automatic bid into the MIAA playoffs, and it's a lot simpler of an equation. If they don't win... Eh, we need a couple other games to wrap up to figure out where the boxers stand. They would finish it three and three, 500 on the year, and they may be in, they may be out. Yeah, and that's why the Brockton coaching staff emphasized that all week to these players that you must come out here to play this evening, no matter what New Bedford record is, win or lose. These guys always come to play, and it's always a pretty good game um, when they square off. The Boxers getting back a number of starters headlined by Isaiah Laguerre and David Belsius, their offensive and defensive captains respectively. Carlin's Jean will kick off to the New Bedford Whalers to start this game. Yeah, Brockton needs to come out of the gates really early in this first quarter, put New Bedford in a hole. Now Brockton's coming off a big win against Durfee. Big win, 28 to nothing. It was a very, very slow start for the boxers down in Fall River. But that, that gave them some momentum coming into this game, and they got, like you said, they got some of their starters back, so it should really be interesting. The penalties, the penalties remain an issue for the boxers. This ball picked up at the 10-yard line. And rushing up ahead, still on his feet to the 25, now the 30, all the way to the 33-yard line. That's where New Bedford will start. It is the senior, number five, Baron Hilton, in at quarterback. He is listed as a wideout. They converted him on the offseason, and I guess he's got an arm on him. Yep, that's when you find out in the offseason. They were looking for a quarterback. Saw that he has some talent, and look where he's at right now. New Bedford wearing their away white jerseys, red pants with the black trim around the red numbers. The boxers in their new this season black home jerseys with a maroon stripe down the side of the pants, maroon helmets with a boxer decal on the side. A run up the middle down at the 39-yard line. It'll be a second at about three for the Whalers. Yeah, that offensive line on the right-hand side opened up a nice hole for their running back to cut right through and get a nice uh, eight yard carry on the play. And you see right there, big number five in the middle, Baron Hilton, the six foot, 180 pound senior. And a dual threat because he has played the last three years as a wide receiver. So you could have a couple of different looks with Mr. Hilton. Lining up at quarterback this time is True Williams. He is also a senior quarterback. Yeah, it looks like Wilson just made the first down. So it'll give it early on, a first and 10. Brockton last week did not score in the first half until there was about 90 seconds remaining. Very, very, very sloppy effort for the boxers. Yeah, well, you know, given that they had a lot of starters still out, um, so they did what they can, but they got it going in that second half. And it's just nice to have him back in this game. Discipline the name of the game as this one stopped for no gain. It'll be second and 10. Nine yards, uh, nine penalties last week, Miles, for 80 yards lost. Yeah, it's just too many penalties. They have to cut down on that this week. Also returning to action this week, number 17, Amik Watterson who has been suspended the last couple of contests. He is the leading rusher for the Boxers. A Johnny Horn handling most of the duties out of the backfield last week as Derek Williams is still injured and out this week as well. And you see the coverage on that pass by number two. That is David Belsius. Also back from suspension. Yeah, they always miss Derek Williams when he doesn't play. He's such a big factor for this offense. But they do have um, some reliable players to come in and fill in the void. Defense! 
Williams back to pass, looking over the middle, and it's going to fall between four Brockton boxers. Incomplete, it'll be fourth and nine. Well, New Bedford's offensive line gave their quarterback a lot of time out there to try to find somebody open, but you'll see on the replay, he couldn't find anybody. Not really Under a good pass. Under through the route yes. uh, by at least 10 yards. <laughs> So now in punting formation are the Whalers. And it's going to be touched down at around the 21 yard line of Brockton. That's where we'll have the first look at of the night of Michael Williams and the high powered Brockton boxer offense. Isaiah Laguerre. First game back, Miles, uh, after a couple out with injuries. What are you looking for from number 16 tonight? Well, I'm just looking for a good game. Him be focused and very um, enthused about getting back out here on the gridiron. Tejon Glenn Darty, big number 13, the tallest member of the boxer wide receiving corp. He stands at about 6'7". On the end around give, getting to the 30 yard line was Isaiah Laguerre. You can see Isaiah has some speed. Turned that corner and outran the first defendant. You'll see here on the replay what type of speed Laguerre got right there. Couldn't get him. Fair to say he gets all his speed from his cousin, Vanessa Clairvaux. Definitely so. A couple Brocktonians heading towards the Olympics. We'll get into that a little bit later. Norman back to pass. He's got his, oh, he dropped it. Number 12 in the middle of the field and then he was laid out and he is down. He was absolutely decked. That is Devin Fortes. Yeah, you, he should have had this football. You'll see it right here. And I think if he would have caught it, he would have had time to brace himself. Shoulder to shoulder, that's a clean hit. Yeah. By Baron Hilton. Gonna hear that name a lot tonight. Golden opportunity missed right there on that second down play. Now you've got about third down and six. Big third down for the boxers. Michael Norman getting the marching orders from the boxer sideline. It'll be a five wide out set with trips to the near side. Isaiah Laguerre is to the far side. Norman back to pass. He's got time over the middle. He's got Laguerre, and it's off the ends of his fingertips and falling incomplete. It'll be fourth and six. Yeah, I, 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 I like the play. You can see that um, Brockton's offensive line gave the quarterback a lot of time in the pocket for him to throw that football just off. Just well, He actually had a chance to catch that football. Looked like it just went through his fingertips. And so now it is Sten Bruno, his first game back. Part of that squad that got booted for a couple of games and his first punt of the night is a low kick but it takes an excellent Brockton bounce all the way back to the 20 yard line. Wow. Excellent kick by Sten Bruno. It looked short at first but then it just kept rolling miles. Yeah, it was a nice kick but I tell you that new Bedford uh, punt return got awfully close to that football down there and almost hit his feet. You had two boxes down there ready to pounce on it. It is a little bit chilly of a night here at Marciano Stadium. Officially listed as 55, but it feels much closer to 45 and dropping. Yeah, it's a beautiful night because the wind has got a little breeze. You see the flag, um, waving a little bit, but it's, it's not too bad out here. It's football weather. True Williams in the shotgun with three receivers. They give to number 25, and he's brought down for a loss of about four yards. That is Darius Harrison. Yeah, Harrison, you can see here on the replay, he kind of waited for the play to develop, going around waiting for some blocks. Canto. I believe that is running with the football, but there was nowhere to go. Nice coverage 
on the sweep by uh, Brockton's defense there on the right side. The undersized back, only 5'10", but he weighs in at 210 pounds, so what he lacks in height, he makes up for in bruising ability. Ooh. Nice job penetrating right there by the boxes. That was number 10 on the carry, Shaheed Barros. Yeah, you can see right here, Barros had nowhere to go. Once he got the football, he was hit by big number 50 for the boxes. That's Sonny Oak and Lola. Yeah. So it's third and give or take 16. Yeah, this boxes defense, it looks like they're starting to warm up a little bit here after that first possession by New Bedford. Trips to the near side. Baron Hilton is the lone wide out to the far side. Williams back to pass. He's under pressure. He looks long towards the boxer sideline. He's got Hilton who makes a phenomenal grab over Devin Fortes. And he's going to be down at the 46 yard line and Baron Hilton is hurt. Yeah, well I tell you, Devin had a, um, a, a, a he, had, he was right on that football. You'll see on the replay, but somehow the receiver for New Bedford just took it away. Great effort by New Bedford's receiver. You can see Devin right here, but New Bedford's quarterback jumped a little bit high and took it away. So the concern is for Baron Hilton, who is by far the most impactful whaler we've had tonight. Similar situation last week with Durfee's number one running back. Yeah, he was carted off. That was uh, Lucas Roke, who was carted off, and then he escaped the locker room at halftime. He came back out with the team. The trainer saw them, uh, Roke on the sidelines and said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Give me your helmet. We're taking you back to the locker room. Exactly. The only one, the only um, league that can get away with that, and that's very, un, uh, very rarely, is the NFL. Sometimes some players will the, the medical yeah. tent on the sideline. So Hilton is not putting much weight on his right leg. Big week in the New England area. Sports, lottery, a oh, yeah. little bit of this, little bit of that. The Mega Millions has topped a billion dollars for the first time Unbe ever. Unbelievable. Williams on the quarterback keeper down at the 38 of Brockton. And that'll bring up a third and or second rather in about three. That was a nice run there. Williams had an open lane right there, took advantage. Okadola down there, one of his teammates with the tackle. Alumni night here at Marciano Stadium. Most schools call it homecoming, same effect four wideouts William gives off to Canto and he is brought down at the line of scrimmage it will be a third and three yeah nice job by the um, boxes holding um, New Bedford from getting that first down two or three yards short of the first down you can see the gang tackling right there by the boxes nice job in the middle Take the Five minutes to go in the first quarter, still knotted at zero between the big three divisional rival, New Bedford Whalers and the Brockton Boxers. End of the first quarter, we will be talking about what you would do if you won a billion dollars. So stay tuned for that as New Bedford has a first down, and that is True Williams on the quarterback keeper. 437 left in this first quarter. Still no score. Similar start to what we saw last week against Durfee. Brockton 
had a three and out on their first possession of the game. Again, didn't score till there were about 90 seconds left in the first half. And then came out and dominated the rest of the game. 28-0 the final score in that one. Trips to the far side. Williams back to pass. He's got time. He throws it deep over the middle. He's got his man. And it falls as the Whaler was falling to the ground. That was number three, Joey Alverio. Yeah, good defense by Brockton. They, they, even though it looks like the uh, New Bedford player caught the football, but it looks like they got their hands in there to knock it away. Or like you said, Mad Dog, you can see right there, yeah, it was number tw 12 got in the action and um, broke up the play. Second and 10 for the Whalers. Yeah, that was Devin Fortes back there with one of his other teammates. Williams in the gun, trips to the near side, clean wide out towards the New Bedford sideline, the give to Canto, he's got a hole. And he's gonna be about a yard shy of the first down, it'll be third and two. Yeah, that was a nice play there. I think it fooled the Brockton defense a little bit. It was a very weird formation with three wideouts to the near sideline, clean on the far side, and Canto the lone back who was flanking Williams to his right. Yeah, it was like a delayed draw to Canto and he took advantage. Made about eight, eight yards on the carry, seven or eight yards. Now four wide outs as Williams again stands in the gun flank now to his left by Latrell Canto. And New Bedford's gonna call a timeout with 321 remaining in the first quarter. Yeah, New Bedford's head coach, um, he didn't like something there, and so he called a timeout. Mark De DeBrito. Mark DeBrito. Fifth year head coach of the New Bedford Whalers. Going head to head against Peter Colombo, who is in I believe his 12th year at the helm of Brockton High. It's hard to believe 12 years Peter's been down there running the show. New Bedford coming off a game against Bishop Feehan in which you might recognize some of the names on that roster. Uh, Christian Fourier's son and Teddy Bruski's son both on that team. Must be a private school. And both of those guys help out coaching. It must be a private school. Bishop Fian down in Attleboro. Similar situation a few years ago with Severian as a botched handoff. Williams thought he was going to hold on to it, yeah. and Canto pulled it out of his hands and then got stacked up. It'll be a loss of about four. Very aggressive tackling you'll see right here. Nowhere to go, he's met right there. Like you said, kind of a botched handoff. And just as the whistle blew right there, they it's, picked him up. It's Sonny Okinola, he yeah. picked him up and put him down, nice and gently. So Severian a couple of years ago, the year that Brockton played them twice, once in the regular season, once in the playoffs, Andre Tippett's kid yes. and Vince Wilfork's kid. Wow. Four wideouts, two split to each side. Williams in the gun, flanked to his right by a Canto. Williams screen pass oh. and an excellent defensive play. That's number 21, Marquis Dos Santos. That was perfect timing on the hit. You'll see it right here. Once the receiver caught the ball, bang. Nice play. Joey Alverio on the reception and loss, and that's a turnover on downs for the Whalers. So Brockton with decent starting field position at their own 34 yard line. 2.25 left to go in the quarter, still scoreless between the Whalers and the Boxers. Five wideouts, Brockton gonna air it out here and complete to Devin Fortes who turns the corner, gets to the 40, and a late flag thrown in from the Brockton backfield. Yeah, once you see the flag thrown in the backfield, most likely it's a holding call and that's what it is.
the head referee threw that flag from, like you said, behind in the backfield. One to the back against Brockton. 218 to go. It'll be a first. So it'll be first and 20 for the boxers. Now back at their own 24 yard line. Wow, what a hit. You'll see the running back for Brockton. I couldn't see who was carrying the football, but he was upended. Nice tackle right there. That's a Johnny Horn, number 25. Who had the majority of carries last week against Durfee with Watterson suspended and Williams injured. They get their horn again, and he's dropped in the backfield at the 30-yard line. It'll be third and about 14. Big third down here for the boxes. It's going to be a tough to get a first down, but uh, with uh, 107 and counting. Last week, a Johnny Horn 11 carries for 80 yards, good for an average of 7.3. And no fumbles. No fumbles. But Johnny Horn technically the leader of the boxers running corpse with 42 carries on the year for 240 yards, an average of 5.7. Norman dumps it off to Horn. Now Horn cutting over the middle. He's to the 45, all the way to the 50. A first down for the boxers. Wow. That delayed screen pass worked perfectly for the boxes. And uh, Johnny followed his blockers to perfection to get that first down. Nice play call by the uh, Brockton State coaching staff. You can see him hustling to that first down marker and some. Nice job by the boxers. Poor receiver set. Norman keeps it himself and slides down for a gain of about six, but a flag thrown in early on that very weirdly developing play for the boxers. Yeah, that's gonna be another uh, boxer penalty. That's two penalties on this um, drive so far. Boxers make it harder on themselves. Chop block against the boxers, yeah, the that's call. A, that's a no-no. 10 seconds left in this uh, first quarter. Fox hit zero. We are at the end of the first quarter. Scoreless between the New Bedford Whalers and the Brockton Boxers. Brockton wins. They're in. They finish the year four and two. If they lose, it's a lot more complicated of a situation. But tonight is the drawing of the century. Mega Millions up over a billion dollars. Miles, if you won, besides giving a hefty sum of that to the church, what are you doing with the billion? Well, I'm going to um, buy a house down in uh, maybe Hawaii, buy one down in uh, Hotlanta, got some family down there, and um, get myself a nice house up here in New England. And Mrs. Jackson gets a shopping spree. Yes, I'll let her or have a shopping spree. At or least, at least one shopping yes. spree. I'll have a, she can have a shopping spree, sure. Oh, while we have the time, I'd just like to thank, uh, congratulate the um, Boston Red Sox for uh, doing what they did. They're going to the World Series. Electronic defibrillator sales have <laughs> tripled in the New England region in the last couple of playoff series. Thank you to Craig Kimbrell as Tejon Glenn Darty drops the screen pass, look down at it like, what are you doing on the ground? You belong in my hands. See it right here. 
just quickly throws it out to, to the wide receiver. He just dropped it. So the Red Sox moving on to face either the Los Angeles Dodgers or the Milwaukee Brewers in the World Series, the Fall Classic. Craig Kimbrell more than once ripping the hearts out of New England sports fans, putting it back in, ripping it out again, loading the bases in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's just nice to see one of the Red Sox players finally get the monkey off his back. David Price, who pitched a great game, nine strikeouts, no walks. Um, Everybody needs to calm down on yeah. praising David Price a little bit. God bless him. God He's 1 him. and 11 in the postseason. Well, we're going to enjoy this now. He He's, went 500 in the last series. Can't go nowhere but up. So. It is third in 21, 22? Yeah. For the boxers, it's third in. A long way to go. Trips to the near side. Norman in the shotgun. The whistles blow. Someone called a timeout. And it's the New Bedford Whalers calling the timeout. So the good news for Boston is that they have until Tuesday to get things back together. And Chris Sale can rest and drink lots of liquids as he had a pretty severe stomach bug. David Price can play a few days of Fortnite or whatever the kids are playing these days. I'll tell you, the, the MVP of that series for me was not Jackie Bradley Jr., but to all the haters looking at you, my brother Bradley, who said they should either cut, release, or trade Jackie Bradley Jr. for as much as they can get, Ha! Suckers. Yeah, Jackie, you know, he keeps that same even keel even after he got the MVP trophy. Very humble, man. And um, Grand just, slam in the playoffs. Grand slam in the playoffs, a two-run homer in the playoffs, a two-run double in the playoffs. Just a clutch. He came and played clutch in that uh, series to get to the World Series. As much as he did, is Norman drops back to pass, looking long over the middle, overthrows everybody. I gotta say, Eovaldi, I think, was was more valuable to the Red Sox. As far as pitching goes, he was very, very, he was key as far as the pitching goes. But uh, he's only in there a few he times. He started, what, game three? Yes. Did Comes back job. two days later and pitches two innings in relief? Excellent job. was definitely one of the keys. Now everybody has a chance to rest as Bruno punts this one away, short kick, and fielded at the 37-yard line. That is where True Williams and the New Bedford Whalers will start. Still looking for first blood to be drawn here at Marciano Stadium in the last game of the regular season. The rumblings are, if Brockton wins, it'll be either Attleboro or Franklin. And the and belief is that that game would be here at Marciano Stadium next Friday night. Yeah, those are two, t two tall orders right there. Those guys are on pushovers just because they're out there in the woods. Going to get through this game first. As Williams on the quarterback keeper, or rather that was, oh, it was true Williams. Yeah, it was true. See right here. It was straight quarterback draw. Fortes with a good tackle diving down and cutting the lane. It is a first down for the Whalers uh, as they approach midfield at the 49 yard line. Williams in the gun, four receiver set, and that's gonna be a false start against the New Bedford Whalers looking on the near sideline. If we could take a look at that replay, number one jumped. Brendan Moniz right on the near sideline. 
Folks, tonight is alumni homecoming. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, yeah. And more than 60, and and Brockton's too. number 21 very alertly calling him up, Marquis Dos Santos. It'll be first and 15 for the Whalers. Please stand. Let's welcome everyone back. The alumni of Brockton High School getting a shout out here on alumni night at Marciano. It'll be now second and 10. The alumni staff tent will remain open through halftime. Be sure to drop by and say hello. Well, Friendly we're already standing, so. Already Brown standing. To sell, and many gift baskets and prizes. We also want to thank Charlie. Not biased at all. Not biased at all. There. Greatest class in Brockton High School and history, 2011. I'm looking out here. I see one um, alumni that's been a been a big uh, couple of them right yeah, next right to there. each other. Yep. Dennis Hersey and Gene Merrill. Williams back to pass, looking long. He throws a bomb. It's going to be over everybody. Gene Merrill, player and coach, I believe, for Brockton High. And principal. He just lost a relative recently, yeah, uh, his Bo Merrill. Yeah, his brother Bo Merrill. One of the more um, great citizens of Brockton over the years. And unfortunately, it was his time to go home, but he did a lot around here for the young people of Brockton. And just a great guy to be around. Member of the NAACP. Williams back to pass, looking to bomb it again under heavy pressure. His dump is complete to Latrell Canto, and he's tossed out at the 40-yard line. Should be enough for a Whalers first down. Yeah, that was a nice screen pass to uh, delayed screen pass because... Um, they let Brockton's offense, uh, defensive line come in. You can see them all coming in, and he just threw it right out there to number 26, and he had open field to get a first down. First and 10 for the Whalers. At the boxer 40-yard line. Three receivers, two to the near side. And True Williams in the gun. He gives off to Latrell Canto. No, he keeps it himself and turns the corner up the middle. And has a gain of about six. Fooled some of the defense right there. The quarterback kept it. Got about a five-yard carry on the play. Fooled me. Second and four, Williams in the gun. He's got time, looks deep over the middle. Got him. He's got his man. It's a touchdown for the Whalers. Wide open on some busted coverage. Yeah, Devin Forte was behind him about two steps, maybe three steps on that play. I'm not sure what he was looking at, but he should have stayed right with him. That was a basic post pattern. See here on the replay. Again, great pocket protection even though he did once he um, let loose on that football he was hit so he did have to rush it a little bit but perfect pass and uh, the New Bedford Whalers strike first with uh, 651 left on the second quarter clock Shahid Barros the six foot one junior The Whalers going for two here. No surprise in high school football. Williams back to pass. Dumps it over the middle, and it's going to be short. Two-point conversion is no good. That'll make New Bedford six. So it's six to nothing, New Bedford on top. 6.51 to go as we take a look at the two-point conversion attempt. Williams realized he was in trouble at the last minute. And attempted to hit Barros over the middle and yeah, just Barrows, coming up short. He had it, but once he hit that ground, it was it was out of his um, grasp. It was a tough catch. When you 
you hit that turf like that, it's, it's tough. Bedford kicking off, it is Fortes and Isaiah Laguerre back deep at the 10 yard line to return for the boxers. kick, but has the distance, fielded by Fortes. Or well, that's a Johnny Horn getting up to the 35 yard line. Yeah, nice run back by Johnny Horn. Well, Tough ball to pick up, but he handles it well. Just goes straight up the, mid, uh, the right side of the uh, field. And you see number 17 right there, Amik Watterson, suspended for the last two games, has not had a carry yet tonight. Six forty-five to go in the second quarter. Norman, there's a flag thrown in. And that was Amik Watterson getting his first carry of the night. It'll be second and about eight to go for the boxers. 6.36 to go in the second quarter, six nothing. The Whalers over the boxers. The gear to the near side of Johnny Horn and Watterson in the backfield. The throw to Atkinson on the far side and that falls incomplete. It'll be third and about seven. Yeah, you'll see right here, that did not fool New Bedford's defense as he was covered, blanketed right there. He was right on at number nine, one of the linebackers. So it's third and in a long seven, we'll call it eight for the boxers. Trips to the near side, a cramped near side. Fortes, the man in motion, a dump off to Isaiah Laguerre. He's brought down at the line of scrimmage. And it might even be a loss of one, depending on the spot. So Laguerre's first reception goes nowhere. Yeah, this is a big third down situation for the boxers' offense. They really need to get something going here with 6.22 in the second half, excuse me, in the second quarter. They need to um, continue bringing the football down the field. It's going to be fourth in a very generous spot, fourth in about six. Okay, I didn't realize it was a fourth down. So definitely punting situation for the boxers. Nice job by the uh, New Bedford Whalers to uh, hold. It is Sten Bruno back to kick. A high whirlwind kick that goes out at the 50 yard line. What the heck happened on that one? I mean the wind's blowing but. He botched it. Not gale force winds that would have caused that one. No, nah, he didn't get his full foot on that football. Gives, uh, it was it was high and end over end, and once it got to the fifty, it just seemingly hit a wall up there. Box's defense really got a hold here. They cannot put themselves in a hole and let the New Bedford Whalers come down and score. 
if you have the opportunity, Miles, look at New Bedford's center when he's standing up as this run goes ahead for a gain of about nine, but it'll be close to the first down. And I think they're gonna spot him with enough for a Whaler first down. Yeah, that was a nice run. Oh, that's the, uh, yeah, the center big boy there. I think I see number 75 on his jersey. That's 76, Anthony Soares, 5'11", and a staunch 345 pounds. As I think that's Williams on the keeper. All the way down, there's a boxer down at the 25-yard line. Wow. Big gain there, big play, big running play by the quarterback. Boxers just couldn't get a hold of him. Fortes again in coverage. And you can see Fortes is a big kid. Excuse me, on True Williams. Big kid. So uh, you have to really know how to tackle. Temo called by Brockton here. Yeah, I think that's a good time out there with 4.58 on the clock. After that big play, Brockton coaches need to talk to their defense, set, uh, settle them down. 5'11", 345 pounds yeah, for Yeah, he, he uh, looks about 345 pounds. A brick house in the middle of their offensive line. I think that sets him up as the heaviest lineman we've had here. Yeah. See nobody 345 Marciano. pounds, yeah. We saw 300 at BC High. Yeah. I think a couple of 280s against Severian. And, and what makes you show off his weight, he's only 5'11. <laughs> he's, you know, so he's a big boy. He's a big one. Four fifty-eight to go in the second quarter. Brockton looking to get even with the Whalers, who are threatening again. It's uh, first and ten on the thirteen. Williams in the gun, three wideouts. Quarterback keeper and Williams is thrown down for a yard loss. Yeah, that was a nice play right there. You'll see it right here. Big number seventy-three, Jose De Pina. Just bear hugs him. And the boss is gonna need more of that. They can they really can't give up a touchdown right here. They really need need to play hard nosed football. Ball is inside the red zone. So four receiver set, and New Bedford's going to call a timeout. Yeah, the coach could see that some of his players didn't know exactly what to do. So that, that was a good timeout. I mean, they're down there close to scoring. They want to make sure everything is um, copacetic. Make sure everybody's on the right playbook. Second and along 11 for True Williams, who throws it and complete to the five yard line. Wow, that was a great catch. Good coverage, but great throw, great catch. And uh, True Williams is being true to heart, showing his leadership. Again, he's a senior. You'll see it right here on the replay. He feels the pressure. Again, nice catch by Barrels. Third down and about, say about four yards to go. Three or four yards to go. 
Three and a half to go in the first half as the band gets ready for the halftime show. Looks like we might see a little bit different of a setup from the marching band. There's another timeout is taken. Marching band splitting sides. I believe New Bedford calling that timeout. Three twenty-four left in the second quarter. It's third and four for the New Bedford Whalers who are on the doorstep at the five yard line. The Sox are, the Red Sox are watching tonight's game, the Dodgers and the Brewers to see who they'll play. Friendly wagering is always fun. David Ortiz and A-Rod on the set of Fox Sports coverage is, there's no way he's in bounds on that one. Yeah, he, and out of bounds was Baron Hilton, so it's an yeah. incomplete pass for yeah, True Williams. Yeah, nice catch. You'll see it on replay, but after he caught it, his body fell out of bounds. His feet were not inbound right there. His feet. That's, I mean, that's catch of the year ESPN top 10 if he makes that grab. Exactly. With his feet down. Ball was a little bit too far out in front of him for him to keep his feet in the end zone. More on the David Ortiz A-Rod wager after this offensive series. Or even better, a timeout taken by the Brockton mm -hmm. Boxers. Ortiz and A-Rod bet on the Sox-Yankees American League Divisional Series. Of course, the Yankees are terrible in everything they attempt. A-Rod lost the bet. A-Rod lost the bet, had to put on a full Red Sox uniform oh, and have champagne dumped on him by Big Poppy. Beautiful. I like that. Quite the scene at Fox Sports Studios. Yes, Big Poppy looking quite dapper. If there's any Dodgers or Bruins fans out there that would like to make a friendly wager on the World Series, hit me on Twitter. There you go. At Mattman32293. Did you say Batman? Mattman. Oh, okay. Mattman. Or you can go through BCA. You see it right on your screen at Brockton Channel. Three receiver set. Williams in the gun. Looking to pass to the sideline, and it drops incomplete again, and this brings up an interesting situation. Brockton It'll be... Brockton stopped him. A turnover on downs at the four-yard line. You can see the pressure on and Williams. And tipped by Isaiah yes. Laguerre right at the end. Williams had to rush it a little bit. He felt the pressure, and like you said, a nice uh, defensive play. So now a very long field for the Brockton boxers. It is a 96 yard field that Brockton has to go in the next three minutes and 15 seconds if they want to draw even or take a lead. And they really need to uh, do something here. Norman dumps it off to Sten Bruno. Gee, New Bedford was right on that. On this day in sports history, October 19th of 2004, Kurt Schilling led the Red Sox to an American League Championship Series. It was the bloody sock game. You know, it's, it's hard to believe it's been 14, 14 years. years. Fumble, the ball is out, New Bedford takes over. And that's not, that's oh, definitely not one, what that's definitely Bedford. not what they wanted to do there. A Johnny Horn coughing that one up for the boxers. Ooh. Couldn't see quite who um, knocked the ball out of his hands, but no excuse. He should have held on to that football. Isaiah Gomes recovering for the Whalers. 
A precarious situation now with two and a half minutes to go in the first half. The Whalers with a first and goal on the eight yard line. Three receivers set. Williams in the gun. Latrell Canto to his left. Ball is snapped. They give to Canto. Up the middle. He's going to be stopped. A gain of maybe one. Brockton's defense has a tall order. They just made a nice stance down there, and their offense coughed up the football. Now they're back on the field. Second and goal from the seven. One fifty and counting for the Whalers, who are trying to waste out as much of the clock and score a touchdown as possible. Williams in the gun. The give to Canto up the middle. He's got a lane and he's brought down at the two. So now it's third and goal from the two yard line. Oh, that was a nice hole right there for the running back to cut right through Canto. Gets it down close to the goal line, only a couple yards short. Third and goal. Third and goal from the two. Williams in the gun, trips to the near side. Give to Canto, and he's going to get in. Touchdown, Whalers. Yeah, Canto really made a second effort there. It looks like the boxers could have held him, but he was determined to get past that goal line, and now Brockton's really in a hole, 12-0 at the moment. Canto, 5'10", 210-pound senior for the Whalers. Yeah, you could see determined effort there. He just bowled over the... Box of defense. New Bedford going for two here, trying to make up for the missed conversion the last time around. 51 seconds to go in the half. Five receivers and a clean backfield for True Williams. Ball is snapped, pass is thrown, and the pass falls incomplete. It will remain 12 to nothing. New Bedford on top. Well, I tell you what, in the second half, Brockton's offense really had to start doing something early on. They don't want to put the pressure on themselves to still be down by a couple of touchdowns in the, in the fourth quarter. So they really need to do something in that third quarter. Mad Dog, you know how to do the Macarena? The Macarena came out when I was a kid. Wow. Then this you, is early 90s, right? I, I, you got me. One of the original line dances. This predated the cha-cha slide, the Cupid shuffle. Well, actually, we had a few line dances back in the 70s. We had the bus stop back in 51 seconds left in the half. <laughs> 51 seconds left in the first half. Brockton is about to receive the kickoff. New Bedford's going to kick off from their own 35-yard line. Yeah. 
A low kick fielded cleanly at the 40 yard line. That's number 32 for the Boxers getting to the 49 before he's stacked up. It's Aaron White. Yeah, he did a nice job. Used his speed to go around the right side then didn't cut right back up the middle. Gives the boxes uh, the ball about the 50 with uh, 44 seconds to go in this half. Going to give a shout out to PA announcer DJ extraordinaire. Club Johnny Mack in full effect here at Rocky Marciano Stadium. Club Johnny Mack, I like that. Ball is snapped badly and Norman is brought down a loss of about 11. And I think if the boxers are smart here, they'll let the clock run out and go into halftime. Yeah, that was just a bad snap. Twenty seconds to go. The boxers might try one heave towards the end zone here. Trips to the near side, two wideouts to the far side. A flag thrown. Boxes are just not focused in this first half. Too many mis penalties. Big number 75 jumped a little bit early. That is Joseph Asari, the senior. Senior at that. Oof. And the clock runs out. And we have hit halftime. It's 12 to nothing. The New Bedford Whalers on top of the Brockton Boxers. Miles. A very sloppy first half for the Brockton Boxers. And the offense needs to start clicking. They need to do it soon. Yes, the um, Boxers defense hasn't been too bad. Um, that second touchdown wasn't their fault. Um, with a fumble down there inside the 10. But Brockton's offense has been anemic in this first half. They really need to jump start it in the second half to give themselves a chance to come back. They're only down by 12 points. Miles, talk about the first half performance of True Williams, quarterback of the New Bedford Whalers. Well, True Williams is, is the true deal. He's been, big senior's been standing tall there in the pocket, connecting on passes, nice running plays, good um, screen passes. He's been basically the difference in that offense. It's the Brockton Boxer Halftime Show right now. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this.
kid dancing. Oh yeah, yeah.
Let's hear it for our band, our color guard, our majorettes, our halftime dancers. Awesome as always. Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We never know. Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay? All G. You all right, girl? Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. It's easy, awkward. Hey, um, you haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. How to know if you should reach out to a friend. Your friend might be. Thank you. Thank you. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Good. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh boy. We just found it. Oh. Our back and forth. Okay. Victory. <laughs> Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Dad! Whoa! You made time. That was perfect. <laughs> okay, here we go, throw it! Yeah. You probably don't remember what you told me. Nice. But I heard every word. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into Marciano Stadium for second half action between big three divisional rivals, the New Bedford Whalers and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner for tonight's festivities, the one, the only big game, Miles Jackson. Not a lot of action for the Boxers offense so far. The score is 12-0. 
New Bedford over the Boxers. If Brockton wins this game, they win the Big Three division. If they don't, it's much more complicated. The winner of the division isn't technically settled before Thanksgiving, which is after the playoffs. Well, there you go. So the message to the Brockton Boxers is get it done. Yeah, they're going to have to get it done in this second half. The offense is going to have to get it done. Tell you, New Bedford's defense has done a good job keeping the Brockton uh, offense in check. There has been times when Brockton's offense just didn't execute well, but uh, New Bedford's defense has done a good job. Brockton receiving the second half kickoff. The give to a Johnny Horn, he gets a gain of about three. Meek Watterson, one carry, no yards so far. Yeah, you can see Horn there spinning around. Get that extra one or two yards. Isaiah Laguerre back this week as well. He's got one reception for no yards as well. Somebody jumped somewhere. There was definitely a, a cadence <laughs> miscue there because a couple of Brockton's uh, left side there, they moved at the same time. It's uh, the Ed Hockley call in the NFL. That's a false start against the entire Brockton Boxers team. And that's not a good way to start off on the on the second down. So instead of second down about eight or nine, eight or seven yards to go, it's now a second down on eleven. Again, clean receivers for the boxers. They give to Horn up the middle. So it gets a little bit chippy out there. It'll be third and about seven. We're mixing some baseball analysis in with tonight's action. Wade Miley, a starter for the Milwaukee Brewers, lifted after just five pitches last night. He's the first player to start back-to-back -back playoff games since 1930. Norman back to pass. He's got time over the middle. Almost intercepted. And that was Baron Hilton. Yeah, and I tell you, the quarterback, Norman, he waited a little bit too long because he had Tayshawn Darty Glenn open as he did a um, pattern in towards the middle, and he waited until there was a defender on him. Then he threw it. If he would have threw it once he made his cut, he had him wide open. It was Joe Johnson on the coverage, not Baron Hilton. And Johnson, you can see right at the end of that replay, very frustrated with himself as Sten Bruno kicks this one away. And there is something in the air above the 50-yard line because Bruno's punts are just dying there. And then they're taking a nice Brockton bounce for 10 or 15 yards. DJ Johnny Mac spinning the tunes. Silento's Watch Me. Watch Me Whip, Watch Me Nay Nay. One of the favorite songs of Mike the Postman Simmons' daughter, Munchkin. Yes, yes. It's uh, that in Despacito. This True Williams quarterback keeper up the middle took a pretty big hit. Isaiah uh, LeGarrett came right in there. You see him right here, number number 16. Nice pop right there. So it'll be second and about four to go. Eight and a half to go in the third quarter. Brockton. Looking to get on the board here. 
if they do not win this game, a few other things need to fall into place as New Bedford calls a timeout. If they win, they automatically get the big three uh, division winner bid into the playoffs. If they lose, the big three stays unsettled until Durfee faces New Bedford on Thanksgiving, which is after the playoffs have already ended. Yeah, I, I, if I was Brockton, I wouldn't put, put, put You my, can't leave it up no, to chance. You can't leave it. No, you, you, you got to perform on the field and end it here. End any questions. And if you win, the rankings aren't a power rankings as this one is overthrown by about 10 yards. Wow. It's record and win percentage base. So the boxers would go into the playoffs at four and two, which is a pretty decent win percentage. That's, what, a 750 winning percentage? Yeah, on that pass play that the um, New Bedford just, just did, the quarterback went to his right down the field long, but on his left, number one, for um, New Bedford, Brendan Moniz, he was wide open on the left-hand side. Nobody was covering him, nobody. So Brockton needs to watch that. Definitely there was a breakdown. Luckily for the Brock boxes, uh, the quarterback did not see the open man. Williams complete to Hilton. And he's got a first down for the Whalers. Nice pass. Nice catch. He zipped it right in there. In between two defenders. And holds on to the football. DeCruz on the reception is first of the night for the Whalers. Now eight minutes to go in the third quarter. New Bedford moving the football now on the boxer side of the field at the 47. The hot chocolate is being distributed in the stands. Canto has a gain of about four yards. The temperature dropping. It started about 64 degrees. We're down to a brisk 52. Beautiful autumn evening for football. Second and five to go for the Whalers. 7-10 to go now in the third quarter. High snap. Williams gonna keep it himself. Hit immediately and keeps the legs churning and spinning his defender. It'll be a first down for the Whalers. Wow, Williams just carried his defender. Defender had him before he got to the first down marker, but his determination, you'll see it right here. Defender He's grabbed right there. there. And he carried him for another three or four yards for first down. Williams having a great day. Great evening here in uh, Rocky Marciano Stadium. Word on the street, if Brockton wins this game, they would face either Attleboro or Franklin next week. That game would be here at Marciano Stadium. Flags thrown, it's gonna be delay a game against the Whalers. It's a break right there for the boxes. Puts them back five yards. Williams receiving the snap, looking to pass. He's going to be hit and thrown down at the New Bedford 45-yard line. That will bring bring about a, let's see, third, and we have to count now. Nice job here. You'll see on the replay, Okandola just runs through his um, blocker and nicely takes down the quarterback. Finally, he gets in there. He's been getting in there, but just at the last split second before the quarterback lets loose the football. Finally, he got a good sack right there. Generous spot at the 47-yard line of New Bedford. They have to get to 
The boxer's 26, so. Second and 26, as Seth says on the board. With 5.28 left in this third quarter. Yeah, 26 seems about right. It's a very long, long way that the Whalers have to go. Five twenty-eight to go in the third quarter. Twelve nothing, New Bedford over the Brockton Boxers in the final game of the regular season. You see the pink socks for the Boxers Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The cheerleaders have pink pom poms. There's pink hats and shirts in the stands. Williams bobbles the snap. He's in trouble again. Canto drops it, and it'll be third and twenty-six. Fortunate for on the boxers. Canto dropped that. He looked like he could have made, picked up 10, 15 yards on the play. New Bedford has been having a lot of um, success in that little delayed screen pass, letting the um, defensive lineman come in. And um, I think with the, the trouble the boxer secondary has had tonight, you're going to try to take the shot here. You got to go for the first down. 5.23 in this third quarter. Four wideouts, another high snap bobbled by True Williams. He's hit as he throws, and it's gonna be short of number one, Brendan Moniz. And it'll be fourth in a country mile that the Whalers have to go. Gee, that was good, good pressure on the quarterback. But if the defender, number 16, would have turned around, he's just looking at the, at the receiver. If he would have turned around, he could have caught, possibly intercepted that football. So it'll be interesting to see here if the punt gets to the original first down marker. It would have to be about a 50 yard punt for that to happen. It bounces at the original first down marker and Fortes falls on it at the 17 yard line. And that's where the boxers will start their second drive of the second half. 5-11 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, boxers need a big play for some big yardage. They, can, they can't really grind it out because they've had, they have no success in grinding the football out and marching down the field. They need a big time play from someone. Jose Laguerre, the lone wideout, he is to the near sideline, now in motion. Gets the end around handoff, trying to cut and turn the corner. He's gonna be stopped at the line of scrimmage, no gain. Boy, that play did not fool anybody on the New Bedford defense. The man in motion got the football, Laguerre. But uh, right side of that whale of defense was ready for him. Four and a half minutes to go. It's second and 11 for the boxers. Again, Laguerre, the lone wideout. He is to the near side in man coverage. Michael Norman under center. He looks to pass. He's got Laguerre. It's tipped by the Whaler defender. And it falls incomplete. Just a tad bit short. Great defensive play by the um, Whaler defender there, but it's just a tad bit short. If he could have got it out over number 16's uh, shoulder there, that was a touchdown possibly. Excellent coverage there by Shahid Barros. Bedford's defense very confused here. There's a five wide out set. Norman back to pass over the middle and attempting to throw into triple coverage for Devin Fortes, it falls incomplete. Gee, I like uh, if you could have got out there to the big man, number 81 for the boxes. He was somewhat open. 
He's big. And he decided to throw it in, in the middle there with a lot of coverage. He's just not seeing the field well this evening. Fourth and 11, the boxers line up to punt again. It is Carlin's Gene back. Bobbles the snap, able to get the kick away. End over end kick and it is down at the 37. Yeah, that was a nice recovery by the by the um, punter. Wasn't a good snap. For some reason the uh, snapper isn't having too good of a night tonight. He's been off cue on those snaps to the punter. Brockton opening the season 2-0 against Lexington in that blowout win here at Marciano. Then a two-point win at Natick High. That crazy walk-off safety, a block punt for a safety. Had that very weird bye week before BC High came to town and defeated the Boxers here at Marciano 21-13. Shout out the following week, 14-0 against Severian. Going down to Fall River last week and humiliating the Durfee Hilltoppers, 28 to nothing. Yet to get on the board here at home against New Bedford. A weird season to say the least. Very weird. In Watching those Catholic Conference games against BC High and Severian Miles, you really thought the Boxers had a chance, but the penalties, the mental mistakes are what killed it for the Boxers as flags yeah. thrown in, the play is stopped. Yeah, that, that, that's gonna be a penalty on um, uh, oh, offensive sorry. line, false start. You can see number 50 pulling early on the play. But yeah, they just... A few things fall different ways. A uh, pass is caught here. Uh, yeah. Passes defended there, and the Boxers are looking at 5-0 right, right now. Right, uh, a couple of um, mental mistakes on penalties. They had some big plays brought back because of penalties. They've just been having a tough time after that uh, second win. Of course, they were supposed to play Catholic Memorial between Natick and BC High. Dropped from the schedule two weeks before the start of the season. As here's a big play for the New Bedford Whalers. It'll be close to the first down. I think it'll be just short. Again, the Whalers have been running this play all night. A little screen pass, let the defensive line come in, commit. With Trell Cantro again. Yeah, and it's just been nice big chunks of yardage on those screen passes. Flags thrown, this one's coming all the wow. way back. Big break for the boxers right there. That's gonna be an unsportsmanlike against the Whalers. It's yeah. going, Yeah. when I say all the way back, all the way back to the 44 yard line of New Bedford. So that will bring up a second and, about, a second about and 29? Yeah, 29, 28? 30 yards. Trips to the far side, two wideouts to the near side. True Williams in a clean backfield, drops back to pass. He's under pressure, flags thrown again. Nice. Williams is sacked, and I would think that holding is going to be the call. That flag thro thrown in from the near sideline at the line of scrimmage, and they're going to wave off the flag. Yeah, it looked like there was some holding there. Right there, number 50 almost held. You can see he let him go, but... Even if it was a flag, I, I would have um, I would have um, declined the penalty and keep it at third down instead of taking the 10 yards and um, go back to second down. Because right now you only got two minutes and two seconds left in this third quarter, and uh, soon the clock will be against the um, boxes once we get into that fourth quarter. Four wideouts, Latrell Canto to the right of True Williams is going to keep it himself. Spins off the initial hit from number seven, Sean O'Brien, who caught up with Williams, and it will be a fourth and about 15. 15, yeah. 
That was a nice play call, a little quarterback draw. You see he was planning on running with it. Nobody on the boxes picked it up, and he got a nice little piece of real estate there to um, get it past the 50. High snap and a high kick. Takes a boxer bounce and it will be touched down at the 21. And that's where we'll have the boxer start for quite possibly the most important drive of the night, Miles. They need to do something here on this drive as time's winding down at the, uh, the third quarter. About a minute left yeah, in the third frame. Yeah, definitely a critical, critical drive right here, Matt. Boxers need to get something going just for their momentum, their psyche, because they've really been stagnant most of this football game. The ball is fumbled. New Bedford's going to pick it up and walk into the end zone. So just the opposite of what needed to happen at Shaheed Barrows for New Bedford and I Miles I don't even know what the heck happened he, he lost he lost the ball was I believe handed off to him or pitched out to him let's see but he never really got a good handle on the ball right there see he never really got a good handle that was a Meek Watterson yep and it and happened so fast I mean you could say why don't you just fall on it but it was just so quick who was it And uh, ten. with 55 seconds left in this third quarter, the way the offense have been playing, that almost nails the um, coffin shut. But we still got a whole quarter to go. But Shahid Barrows, his second touchdown of the night for the New Bedford Whalers. Canto is brought down behind the line of scrimmage on the two-point conversion attempt. It is 18 to nothing. New Bedford stunning the Brockton Boxers here at home. Yep. Brockton's linebacker got right in there, number 30. Josiah Shea. Just not a good Watterson's night. Watterson's second carry of the night. The first one he was brought down for no gain. And the second one never got his hands around the ball. When he got it handed off to It him. was a clean handoff. He just never put it in the cradle. Low kick fielded by number 32. The ball's out again, and New Bedford has it again. Wow. Brockton has just lost total focusness on this, um, in this half. Just inexcusable. Can somebody get a tourniquet or something to stop the bleeding? Wow. That is demoralizing. Defense doesn't get a rest. They have to go back out there. Here it is on the replay. And he's not, he's carrying it like a loaf of bread. He doesn't have it tucked in. Right there, the ball came out, a shoulder yes. hit. But he's not carrying it correctly. Unbelievable. I'd like to take another look at that, if possible. See who forced the ball out. Williams hands off to Cantrell. Yeah, this is really painful to watch. Look how he's carrying the football. Right there. There, the shoulder hit. Mm -hmm. And that was Shahid Barros forcing the fumble. Wow. Number 10? Number 10, yeah, again. He's, he's been having a game Shaheed and a half Barrows, this evening. I thought it was 10, I had to double check, had yep. to see the footage again. Yeah, nice replay down there by the postman. 
Players jump all around. It'll be a false start on the New Bedford Whalers. Nine seconds remaining in the third quarter. And stunned is the only word that comes to mind. I was just saying, nice job by Mike Postman and his crew down there, because I believe um, Mike is um, program he does, director he had, down there. He has a couple of buddies down there tonight as nice we hit the end of the third quarter. We do want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds for Marciano Stadium in a stunning game here between the New Bedford Whalers and the Brockton Boxers. At the helm, Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Next to him, I believe, on instant replay, is also Mike the Postman Simmons. JD Winners on graphics. Couple of camera guys tonight. Up top we have Isaac DeRosa and on the field, the Greek freak, Phil Filipitas. And of course, alongside big game Miles Jackson, I'm the Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Brockton's got to have the quarter of their lives if they want hope of winning the big three division outright. If not, Durfee would have to beat New Bedford on Thanksgiving and it would be a shared title with the New Bedford Whalers. Yeah, that's a tall order to fill after seeing what New Bedford has done this evening to the boxes and what the boxes did to Durfee last week, 28 zip. The bigger issue is, depending on how many teams finished above 500, Brockton might not even get into the playoffs exactly. if they don't win the division. Exactly. And of course, if you don't make the playoffs or you get eliminated from playoff contention, the games continue and they get pretty pathetic. Even if you don't make the playoffs, if you're going to you still play somebody. If you don't make the playoffs, somebody. you still play three meaningless games that the players know that they don't mean anything, and they're not going to risk any injuries, especially the seniors that have college careers coming. Yeah, just put yourself in a tough position. True Williams back to pass, throws it off his back leg, complete to Canto. And the big man has a first down for the Whalers with 10-11 to go in this game. Again, the screen pass to Canto again. I don't understand on that particular, they've been running it all night while they don't have somebody keyed on Canto. I mean, they've been doing that all night to the boxer defense and they don't seem to be able to uh, remedy the situation, make adjustments. Whatever adjustments they've been trying to make, they're not working. I know the boxers' defense has been out there a long time today, tonight. Canto on the handoff gets to the 20-yard line. It'll be a second and about five. And you know the uh, New Bedford Whalers, after scoring their third touchdown, they're going to run the football and try to get some time off this clock here in the fourth quarter with 9.21 left and counting. New Bedford knows the clock is, is in their favor. So the best thing to do, run the football. Second and five for the Whalers. True Williams in the shotgun. They give to Canto, he's stacked up at the line of scrimmage. He might have had a gain of about one. It'll be third and four. I tell you, New Bedford has kept this crowd in check all game. They really haven't had a lot to cheer about. So the, the question of the night, Miles, is it the missteps of the boxers, or did New Bedford just play about as perfect a game as you can play? It's basically a combination of both, Matt. Um, New Bedford has played a good game, and they've taken advantage of the boxer mistakes. And the boxers' offense just made too many mistakes, 
penalty wise and execution wise. And that, that's why it's put him in this 18 uh, nothing hole. And of course the defense has been out there just way too long. It's fourth and about three for the Whalers. Now don't get me wrong, the defense has made some mistakes out there, but they've been out there a long time this evening. Seven and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Brockton's going to call a timeout. It's 18 to nothing. Looks like about the second. The New Bedford Whalers on top. Second down and 19 to go. It says on the scoreboard for first down, but it looks like fourth down, oh, excuse me, fourth down and two yards to go. Read the scoreboard wrong. But well, it's a big play for the Brockton defense. If anything, they don't want New Bedford to score another touchdown and really rub their faces in the dirt. So I you got if some. If you can get a quick one here, there's still hope for a couple of quick drives, but right if now, the boxers don't convert on their next drive, they may as well pack it in. Yeah, right now it's just box of pride on the defensive side. The uh, Whalers have had their way with this evening on offense. They've been able to move the ball up and down the field here in this second half. Ball is out, True Williams picks it up and he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. So that will be a turnover on downs and Brockton will take over at their own 25. You see right there, it was a bad snap. Number 76 who snapped it when he snapped it, it basically caught his um, derriere and it just went right down to the ground. First and 10 boxers with 7.21 to go in the fourth quarter here. Trips to the far side, two wideouts to the near side. Norman in the gun drops back to pass. He's got his man who is hit wow. really hard. That's Isaiah Laguerre on the far side. Yeah, Barrels again came in with the big time hit. You'll see it right here on the replay. He's been all over the field today. Big hit, scoring touchdown, causing fumbles. He's done it all. Scored the defensive touchdown for the New Bedford Whalers and forced the fumble on the ensuing kickoff. And Barrows is only a junior. Norman steps up, throws over the middle, tipped and falls incomplete. Well, at least Barrows is making our jobs easy. Player of the game, no doubt, number 10 of the New Bedford Whalers, Shahid Barrows. Yeah, he's really been standing out. And give a lot of credit to the quarterback for uh, New Bedford He's taken what the defense has given him, Williams. And you can see Big 76, he's got it. When he hikes that football, it's got to be directly underneath him. It can't be a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, or it's going to hit his derriere. Two touchdowns, a forced fumble for Shahid Barrows. Norman back to pass under pressure, throws over the middle, and... Off the hands of Adam Olafale. Gee, that had to be it, but again, he went on the right-hand side, but on the left-hand side, Tayshawn, number 13, Darty Glenn was, uh, he was somewhat open. If they could have got it to him, he's a big target. Again, uh, Norman really hadn't seen the field well this evening. He's missed some open men. He's been pressured. It's just been a tough night. Norman off the mark for Tejon Darty Glenn. Actually, and that was off number, number 18 there. It went off his hands. You'll see the replay right there. 
That was, was uh, Hall. Trey Hall. Trey Shuler Hall, who had a big game last week against Durfee. Turnover on downs, first down, New Bedford from the 30 yard line. This game, for all intents and purposes, is over. To Williams on the keeper, gain of about five. It'll be second, or six rather, it'll be second and four. Very frustrated boxer sideline. As New Bedford has come in and shocked the Brockton boxers here at Marciano Stadium on alumni night. Yeah, it definitely is a shocker. High formation, the give to Canto, balls out. Canto falls on it. And he did a nice job of just falling on the football because there were some boxes right behind him. You'll see it right here. Miscue, up right there, just knocked it out of his hand. Couldn't see who, who the defender was. But Canto did a nice job. Well, actually, number 26, is that Canto? Yes. He did a nice job just falling on it and keeping possession. I tell you right now, if one of the defenders could have picked that football up and ran in for a touchdown, it would have brought the crowd to its feet. Yeah, and sparked some hope. Exactly, with 5.33 on the clock. Third and 15, you see it on your screen, 18 to nothing. Five and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Brockton attempting to not get shut out here at home for a second consecutive home game. Boxers have showed us that they have a lot to work on, Miles. Yeah. If they make the postseason, they have a laundry list of things to clean up. If they don't, then it's all about suffering through four games of meaningless football. I think we're waiting for the clock to wind to 5.35. Now it's Canto trying to escape trouble. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and long 10. We'll call it third and 11. You gotta give the New England Whalers credit. All their key positions, they got some good, tough, hard-nosed players. Five twenty-four, I believe Brockton Boxes. called the timeout. New Bedford Whalers, you can see in your screen, they didn't bring a lot of fans with them up from down in New Bedford. I'm sure now some of them wish they would have came out to see this. It's a fourth and 13 for the New Bedford Whalers. Bedford in punting formation. It's Isaiah Laguerre back to return. A high kick that takes a big New, uh, New Bedford bounce, excuse me, 
And it's touchdown at the 15 yard line. That is where Brockton will start the next drive. It's five and a half, about 5.13 to go in the fourth quarter. was some confetti that was shot off from the Brockton marching band. Why, I don't know. Either save it till Brockton scores or save it till the end of the game. Well, I tell you, thank God for the Brockton band because they're the only body uh, on this side of the um, stands that is um It was tough last week upbeat. at Durfee. Very tough last week at Durfee. No halftime show. The Hilltoppers marching band is all of 15 members. Half of them are drummers. This play started very slowly as Brockton. Wow, if he could have kept his game. balance. Great catch. But it would have been nice to see him keep his uh, feet. And he would have strutted on home for a touchdown. You'll see it right here. Great catch. Adamola Filet. He goes up high for it. And he, he, and he got it against uh, number 10 for New England. Barrels. Norman back to pass here, really letting him air it out here, and it's Filet again. See it right down the middle. Perfect pass. Bobbles a little bit, but he holds on. Adam Ola Filet with two big gainers on this drive, and Brockton's knocking now with four and a half to go. Just trying to get the goose egg off the uh, scoreboard. New Bedford calls a timeout. That's a good timeout by New Bedford. I think they want to really come out of here with um, a shutout, Matt. So um, The Catholic Conference shutting you out is one thing. Yeah. A division rival that you've beaten each of the last five or six years yeah. is a completely different story. Definitely so. Well, next week, we don't know where or when we will be, but we will be. Keep an eye on our Twitter page at Brockton Channel for matchup information, time, date, location, whether it means anything or not, we'll be there. First and 10 boxers from the New Bedford 34 yard line. Norman Complete, it's Adamola Filet again. Well, that was number 96. A new guy on the field, Jacob Stewart. The junior wideout. Norman back to pass once again. Over the middle into uh, double coverage. It's going to fall incomplete. The clock stops with 4.15. Almost a pass interference, but it was the uh, defensive back timed it just perfectly, I believe, to break up the play. Awfully close. Not a lot of penalties called against the boxers tonight, Miles. There After was, that first drive, there was yeah, a, a couple. Yeah, in that first half, there was quite a few, about three or four penalties, but they calmed down the second half. It's, just they been a, haven't been able to score. Tijon Darty Glenn in man coverage. The ball is thrown towards him. Oh, right through his hands. He could have walked into the end zone, but it's incomplete. Yeah, I think he should have had that. Let's see on the replay. You called it right here, Matt, pointing out Darty. There he is. Oh, oh, he. You know what he did? He kind of turned around a little bit too early, just a tad too early, and it's just out of his reach. Third and 10 for the Boxers, trying to erase the goose egg on their side of the scoreboard. Adam Olafilet on the far side, Darty Glenn and Laguerre on the near side. Screen pass complete to Isaiah Laguerre. Trying to turn the corner, he gets to the sideline, out of bounds at the 15. 
Goes up to it down. You'll see on the replay, he gets it out there quickly. And Laguerre uses speed to get around the corner. About a six yard gain on the play. Heading right for the Greek freak, Phil Philippides, who scrambled out of the way. Big fourth down if um, Brockton wants to put any points on the board. Fourth and about four, Norman back to pass. He's got Jacob Stewart again, who's got the first down at the eight. Nice catch, he held on to the ball nicely because it was a big hit. It is the first, first and goal that Brockton has had tonight. Less than four minutes to go. Norman back to pass, looking for Filet. Incomplete, no flag. New Bedford's playing a very risky game here with uh, man coverage on some dangerous wideouts. That's what set the boxers up on New Bedford's side of the field. A couple of big gainers to Adam Olafale, and he was yeah. the intended receiver. Yeah, that one, it, it, he, he led him a little bit too much, and it was almost intercepted. 3.44 to go in the fourth quarter here. Five wideouts, clean backfield for Michael Norman, who's in the shotgun. Norman, quarterback keeper, he's brought down at the five. It'll be third and goal. I like that play call right there. Brockton almost got away with it and he was almost, almost made it to the end zone. You know New Beth is gonna be very stingy on these next two down, this third down. Boxes need to try to punch it in right here. So Miles, if the boxers don't make the playoffs, it'll mark the first time in the new playoff format that they have failed to reach the playoffs. And the first time in recent memory is Norman's going to keep it and he's gonna be brought down at the four and that will be a fourth in goal from about the four yard line. Gee, I think uh, Norman, he had a chance to run a little bit earlier, right there, there he should've he ran. Should've broke. Should've broke it right there. He had open space to the right. Waited just a tad bit too late. Um, New Bethesda's defense was able to collapse on him. Fourth and goal from the four yard line. There's Brockton not playing for victory right now, but playing for not a shutout. Yeah. Playing for pride. So Miles, as a, a youngin, I don't remember a time when the boxers didn't make the playoffs. I, I, I can't remember either. It's Even if it was one and done. Right. Norman to pass, he overthrows Darty Glenn again. Turnover on downs, no flags thrown. New Bedford will take over and this one's gonna end in a consecutive shutouts for the boxers here at Marciano Stadium against Severian and New Bedford. Yeah, uh, Tayshawn Glenn was, um, he was blanketed by his receiver and he's shown a lot of frustration tonight, but he's partly to blame. A couple of the throws have been accurate. He's been spun around too early, a step behind the ball, off the route. But overall, the boxer offense. Just been anemic. Every facet of the game, the running game. Not much there. Passing game. They haven't attempted a lot of runs since the Johnny Horn fumbled the ball earlier on in the first half. Brockton might play the timeout game here just to try to get that goose egg off the board. You see, n nowhere to go on this play right here. A little mix up with the quarterback and the running back. And Box is able to push him back. Two thirty-eight to go in. Regulation. 
here at Marciano Stadium in a stunning night here. Second and 10 for the Whalers. Quarterback keeper for Williams stopped at the line of scrimmage, third and 10. Two and a half to go. And Brockton stops the clock with 2.31 remaining. Box is hoping to hold New Bedford on this third down, have him punt and um, get the ball back and try to get on the board again. Third and a long nine, we'll call it 10 for the New Bedford Whalers. The give to Canto gets to the 10. It'll be fourth and about four. At least it'll give him some room to punt the football. You can see Canto with the carry. He's been a workhorse all evening for the Whalers. I mean, if we're going to talk workhorses player of the game, it's going to go to Shahid Barros, number 10 of the New Bedford Whalers. Two touchdowns, a forced fumble on. Yeah, the yeah, ensuing he, kickoff of his defensive touchdown. Yeah, he's done it um, on both sides of the football, defense as well as offense. Just an outstanding day for evening for um, Barrows to come down here in enemy, enemy territory and have a great game like that. Along with the rest of the team, I need to give a lot of credit to uh, New Bedford's offensive line. They gave the quarterback, Williams, a lot of time back there to, to do his thing. And they've given the running backs holes to um, show their stuff. Basically, it's been a pretty complete game for the uh, New Bedford Whalers, especially in this second half. The question remains, where has the boxer offense been? It's kind of disappeared. Well, it, it was around last week, but against Durfee. But only you, in the you, second half. Only in the second half, and you really can't count Durfee. I mean, one positive about last week, they, they still didn't have some of their starters, and they did it with some of sub, some subs, but their uh, offense has, has disappeared the last three or four games. Well, it'll certainly be interesting whether the boxers make the playoffs or not. We have to wait till Sunday for all the possibles to shake out. That's when the brackets are released. The MIAA has discretion, especially because the boxers are going to finish three and three. Of course, there's normally seven games in the regular season. Catholic Memorial dropped the boxers from the schedule shortly before the start of the regular season, so the boxers got a waiver, only have to play six. And the normal rule is if you win at least four games, you're in the playoffs. And this is a perfect argument for why this playoff format is so terrible because the division's not going to be decided until after the playoffs. Is that uh, Durfee in uh, New Bedford on Thanksgiving? Wow. Durfee plays New Bedford on Thanksgiving. The boxers will be right here at Marciano against the Bridgewater Random Trojans. Screen pass complete. I believe that's Sten Bruno who's thrown down for a loss of five. And that did not fool anybody. And one of the New Bedford players is down. So buck 21 left here at Marciano Stadium. New Bedford thrashing the Brockton Boxers. 18 to nothing is your score. New Bedford Whaler down late. And that's something you never want to see is an injury in garbage time. No, no you don't. The Whalers are going to finish three and four. Also might have a share of the big three division depending on what the MIAA decides. 
that's never been an issue with this division because usually Brockton just takes over Durfee and New Bedford and they get the automatic bid. That is number nine who is hobbling off the field. Favoring his left leg. Brockton's going to try it here because why not? It is second and about 15. Trips to the far side. Jacob Stewart, the lone wide out to the near side. Norman back to pass, throws it long in the direction of Stewart, and it's intercepted by the New Bedford Whalers. Number eight coming up with that one, and that is the ball game. New Bedford's going to take a couple of knees. That was good coverage by number eight because the quarterback looked to his right, and um, New Bedford's uh, defense back, he stayed right with his man. I mean, that just adds insult to injury. Yeah. Salt in the wound. The boxers now know what the Durfee Hilltoppers felt like last week. Yes. Not a good feeling here not, at Marciano Stadium. Not a good feeling. You can see you New Bedford. <laughs> you can see fired the, up. the Whaler bench jumping yep. and dancing around. It's going to be a short ride home down uh, 24. It's approximately 45 minutes. Yeah. Our Cracker Jack crew down in the um, pro program truck letting us know. Again, doing an excellent job this evening on his cool, crisp all, all that day. the postman's thinking about right now is next year this game is in New Bedford, and that means a stop at DNB Burgers on Elm Street in New Bedford. <laughs> yeah, didn't y'all stop there last year? Every other year, we're there once every two years. And in Fall River, we changed it up as New Bedford takes a knee. Nice job, Johnny. DJ Johnny's out of here. Johnny Mack in early night. 15 seconds to go. The Whalers are fired up. So every other year, back-to-back -back weeks, when we're in Fall River at Durfee High School, we go to Papa Gino's, although that switched to Patty's Pierogies this year. Patty's Pierogies. Pierogies, a Polish delicacy. Mine happened to be stuffed with bacon mac and cheese. Mad Dog, you're getting me hungry. Of course. Well, next year, last week of the regular season, Elm Street, DNB Burgers. We'll see you there. The final score for Marciano Stadium tonight, 18 to nothing. The New Bedford Whalers, a shocking upset over the Brockton Boxers, Miles. What did you see tonight? What do the boxers have to work on if they get into the playoffs with the MIAA so grants them that opportunity? Well, right off the bat, they have to work on execution. Their execution was um, horrible this evening. They just couldn't do things right out there. Uh, the defense, again, was just out there much too long. Uh, they did the best they could. But let's give it to the New Bedford Whalers. They came to play down here in Brockton, Massachusetts. They came to play. They bought their A game, and uh, they came out on top. Brockton has not scored a touchdown here at Marciano Stadium since the third game of the regular season. That was against BC High. They've been shut out of two consecutive here at home. The final score, 18 to nothing. The New Bedford Whalers getting the shocking upset over the Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at BCA, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson, and we will see you next game.